This is the Remarkable Climate Leaders Podcast. In every region, in every town of Europe, there is a climate leader paving the way for climate transition. You might not have heard of them yet. And what is a climate leader anyway? Let's meet one and find out. Opening the podcast series, we have Seamus Hoyne, Secretary General of a European Network, board member of a local Irish energy agency, dean at the university. Whatever hat he wears, Seamus is the right person to introduce us to climate leadership, a concept central to his current research. Let's get this series started. Thank you, Seamus, for joining us and welcome to the show. So let me start with a simple question. What is the Remarkable Project? Thank you. The project is funded through the European Commission Horizons program. And the concept for the program emerged out of the need to accelerate activity, particularly focused on climate neutrality. And climate neutrality is our next challenge. Um, the European Green Deal has set really ambitious challenges for Europe to become climate neutral by 2050. And while Europe has had great success and the member states and our regions and our localities have had great success in terms of developing energy efficiency and renewable energy projects, our next challenge now is climate neutrality by 2050. And that takes leadership. What kind of support do you provide to achieve these goals? So the Remarkable Project is focusing on supporting municipalities, local authorities, and the people that work within those regions uh, to develop roadmaps on climate neutrality to 2050. So this is a new way of thinking. Um, instead of talking about kilowatt hours of energy and energy efficiency, we need to start talking about carbon. We need to talk about multiple actions, not just energy efficiency on its own or renewable energy on its own, we need to do energy efficiency, we need to do renewable energy, we need to do sustainable transport, we need to look at circular economy, we need to look at all of these different uh, complementary issues in parallel uh, and together, and we need to do it quickly. Um, and when we looked at our local authorities and our municipalities and our regional authorities, we found very little support programs for our uh, people in uh, positions of authority within these local authorities and really leadership programs that support them as individuals to lead their organizations and their regions on the climate neutrality journey. Can you give examples of your actions? What Remarkable tries to do then is, um, and what we have done already, is deliver a climate neutrality training program for leaders within our local authorities. So very much working in the public sector. Um, local authorities and regional authorities across our regions in the partnership countries and taking them through both understanding leadership, but then how to develop climate neutrality roadmaps for their uh, localities. And why we're focusing on leadership in particular in that um, it is really important that these leaders are able to make decisions. And these decisions will be difficult decisions, um, some of them, where we will have a choice in terms of where investment goes into the future. So reducing investment in uh, systems that will generate or lock in carbon and comparing that with investment in sustainable energy or circular economy activities. So difficult decisions that leaders will have to make and they will have to step up and make these decisions and justify them and bring their communities and their organizations with them. I imagine that your training did not come out of the blue where did you find inspiration to build your advice? So um, we learned from best practice across the world, looking at international best practice to develop our climate neutrality training program. And then the next step is supporting those leaders to develop climate neutrality roadmaps. And this is where looking in their regions, they set their target for 2050 and figure out how, what are the steps that they will have to take to get to climate neutrality. Let's spend some time on the notion of climate leader. How would you define this title? In my opinion, what does a climate leader look like? So a climate leader is typically a decision maker. Um, he or she is usually in a position of authority to influence, to engage and to bring uh, people with them. So they can be mayors in their municipalities or local authorities. 
Uh, they can be chief executives of organizations. They can be senior leaders, senior managers within those organizations. They could be a head of environmental departments. But there's also opportunities for leaders to come, uh, not just from senior management positions, from, from other parts of the organizations um, who are interested in driving change and influencing the decisions that the local authorities and their organizations that they work for, that they make. But they have to be able to articulate those um, their views, have good science behind their decision makings, but also um, have the ability to convince others. And critically for me, looking at the theory that's out there on leadership, climate leadership uses the model of distributed leadership. And distributed leadership means that there is not just one person driving the agenda, but he or she distributes the responsibility and the authority throughout the organization. So a climate leader really has to involve everyone at every level of operations. Is that right? Often in the past, energy efficiency was seen as the engineer, just his or her job. Maybe it was somebody dealing with the electricity grid. Maybe it was somebody doing the energy monitoring. Now that's not the case. We need everybody involved. And the climate leader has to bring the finance people to the table. They have to bring the communications people to the table. They have to bring uh, climate adaptation in some cases. They have to uh, also address those people that don't believe in the climate change agenda. Um, so very challenging. Um, and then they also have to consider how they can position their local authorities and their regions to take advantage of all of the opportunities that uh, climate neutrality presents in terms of job creation, new skills, attracting new industry, retaining existing industry and enterprises. So um, really the, the climate leader has to take a macro view, but then bring all of the other parts of the organization along with them. Interesting profiles. Can you think of real life examples inspiring this role of climate leader? Often when I think about climate leadership, I, I think about um, two people in, that have influenced me in, in my career. So one is uh, from a community uh, sector and um, a man who, who looked around his locality he saw challenges ahead in terms of the, the community, uh, an aging population, depopulation in the rural area. Um, so young people leaving because there was no unemployment, there was no employment um, and challenges to bring enterprise, to bring industry into the region. But he looked around and he saw that they had forestry, they had hills, so they had lots of wind and they had lots of streams and rivers, they had water. So he said, the future is energy. Um, and he began the conversations. This is in an Irish context. So he began the conversations in the pub. We like to go for a pint of Guinness. Began the conversations in the pub. He began the conversations outside the church on Sundays. He began the conversations in lots of different areas to convince people. Then he brought in the technical expertise uh, through the Tipperary Energy Agency and others to support him do his analysis. And now that community and that individual has supported uh, the creation of 20 jobs in that very small rural community. Uh, they have developed wind projects, PV projects, biomass projects, retrofitting of buildings. So that one seed, um, and he has was an expert in that distributed leadership, he brought people along and convinced them that this is your job. This is your job, Seamus. This is your job. And then the, I suppose the other leader is, uh, in Ireland, we, we call them chief executives of local authorities and a particular chief executive uh, transformed how the local authority thinks about sustainability. And it became a, a brand for the region in terms of sustainability. And it is threaded through the local development plans, how they attract industry. They're working with enterprises, they're working with communities, and it threads through all like, the activities of the local authority. And again, that distributed model sets the vision, but then makes people uh, make sure people buy into that. And I think that's one of the critical things. I think we have a lot of really excellent technical expertise around Europe and in our localities. 
that leadership piece to bring people along is really important. Thank you very much for your time, Seamus. My pleasure. Thank you. In this first episode, we learned about the central role of climate leaders, a collection of people in charge deeply committed to reaching climate goals. As Seamus pointed out, climate leaders should embrace a distributed model for sharing responsibilities and ownership at every level of a project. These passionate and deliberate individuals are at the core of Europe's chance to meet its climate objectives. What do you think a climate leader is? Who? Where? Discover the stories of your region on climateleaders.eu and on your favorite podcast app.